Hello and welcome back. This is another episode of the 2911 Podcast, featuring yours truly, Brian McKithen. And Allie McKithen. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, nice to see and hear, you know, the viewers back again to hear us talk on another topic. Uh, today's topic will be on marital sex. Sex. Yes, the topic is going to be over sex. Uh, since I chewed up a lot of the time uh, on the first episode, I'm going to go ahead and give you the floor and uh, try not to cut you off because ladies do need to hear you too, just as much as the men need to hear me. But uh, I will share the floor and give you the first like. All right, so I guess I would start it off. We had my brother-in-law and sister over a couple of Saturdays ago. And we were playing a game, and it's a game specifically for couples. And my husband said, sex is overrated. And I was like, I don't think it's so much that sex is overrated, but undervalued. And so I'd like to kind of circle back and speak on that a little bit, because we in America now, and just in civilization today, sex has become so undervalued. And not only the act of sex, but within how we represent ourselves as sexual beings we over sexualize ourselves we over sexualize our children and just i just want to pull that back and speak about it in a biblical perspective from all per, from all points from modesty to the act itself to it in marriage and it before marriage okay okay oh i thought you were gonna take over now no i kind of I, I said what i believed already that not I mean, it's not so much that sex is overvalued these days but it's that it's no, or overrated. It's that it's undervalued. And when we were playing the game, uh, I did agree with you. I still stand by my statement, but I never thought of today and time. And I thought what you had said while we played the game, that was like a perfect answer. That I do think it is undervalued. But I, from my perspective, I can't say from the male perspective, I can't speak for every guy. But as a man, me, I do think it is overrated because... The stance I take on that would be, you know how I feel, especially the way we raise the boys and the way I want to teach them is that you have to learn who you are and how to take care of yourself before ever taking in another human being. And so when I say sex is overrated, Paul speaks about celibacy. Mm-hmm. You he know? says it's better to be alone, but if you cannot withstand that burning desire, then it's better to right. marry. So our generation, our, the one that we grew up in, you know, sex, peer pressure, cigarettes, oh, things gosh. like that. Like the the peer pressure of things can amp a person to go about trying or wanting to do something. But if you know who you who you are, and if you spent time with yourself, time with the Lord, most and foremost, if you know who you are in God, you know whether the lust of the eye is for you that thing that your eye i wouldn't say the lust of the eye the lust of the eye isn't for anyone but the thing that your eyes are lusting over Mm -hmm. or at you would know if that thing there is for you or if it isn't so if you spend some time in solitude spend some time just you and the lord spend some time knowing who you are as an individual you won't be skeptical to fall for little whimsical Things like that, like things that, oh, well, my eyes or my emotions or my feelings. Well, I want this because Mm -hmm. this is what everyone else is doing. Right. And because even whenever they're like teaching about it in sex ed, which I don't even know if they still teach that these days, they probably do. And it's all contorted from whatever we grew up learning. But I wish a part of it would have been like, hey, when you do like a part of the teaching would have been like, hey, when you do this, like you are literally sharing DNA. Correct. Like it's not just pleasure. That person is becoming a part of you and you are becoming a part of that person. And that's something that there's not enough emphasis on, not even in the church. The church just says, hey, don't do it. It's bad. Save yourself for marriage. But no one ever really says why or explains like, well, what is the, the bigger picture? Seat. Exactly. The like the, the, of sex. Correct. Right. Not only do you need to know your own worth, you need to understand the worth of that other individual, what demons they may be fighting, because all of that becomes a part of you. Correct. So, I, you know me, I, I have enough knowledge on certain things. I won't go into too much detail, but like I said, I, I totally believe, totally believe a man should not have more than, than what, what he can, can provide can, yeah. for and what he can, yes, what he can keep his provision over. If you are struggling to take care of self, you cannot bring another Correct. woman 
in a woman or person into your life. I, I totally stand on that because now you're bringing this other individual in and the burden. You think life was life isn't hard. Let me start with that. Life is not hard. Life is as easy as we allow it to be for us. And life has obstacles, but it's yes, not it hard. does have obstacles. Thank God for his his knowledge, his wisdom and his understanding and his laws that we can abide by them if we so choose. But life doesn't have to be as hard as we as we make it. But man, I mean, nothing with anyone and how they collect their earnings. But if your earnings are barely keeping you above water, mm-hmm. then why would you then? I mean, everyone mm-hmm. at our age knows you lay down with someone, but the possibilities and the outcomes can be. But that's just biology. And it's like somehow America today has forgotten how bi- biology works. But even before that, to kind of help the listeners understand how Brian work mind works is that we both believe that being married, consecrating a marriage is not what you do at the altar. It mm-hmm. is the act of sex. Correct sex and that's scriptural and, because yeah, and, and even, i'm only saying that because it's to someone who's listening yeah. and they just heard you go on this tangent of like they're only talking about having sex why is he talking about providing for a whole family but that's because that's what we believe that is right. what scripture it, it, says and christ said this to to them when they asked well if a woman had seven husbands i can't remember exactly how they asked but they asked him who is she married to when she gets in heaven you know she she's she's had all these husbands you know and he's like, you know, there is no such thing as, you know, of that yeah. in heaven. And then they also go off and ask him about, um, you know, if a woman or if a man, you know, were to divorce, you know, you know, how, how, how do we go about understanding this? You know, and Christ tells him, like, it, it wasn't it wasn't until your father's, you know, upset at Moses, you know, that Moses declared you give that woman a divorce of decree because mm-hmm. marriage was never I mean for one like I said so sex is sacred mm-hmm. if a man took in a woman that man was then going to be the sole provider of that woman till his last breath mm-hmm. it wasn't that he, whether it was his wife his concubine his handmaiden whatever if he ever took her in sexually he knew he was financially responsible for to, that woman yeah for, and, for not only, life, and not for only every financially, but protection, both spiritual and here in the physical. Like, and that's why I always tell people, like, sorry, I'm going to go on a feminist tangent right now, and not for feminism, but against. Every woman wants to be like, oh, I want to be the man. I want to be the man. I got this. I'm woman. Hear me roar. But whenever you got to stand at judgment, you do not want what that man has. You do not want to answer for what that man wants to answer to. Saying and then that it be, he's head of the household? No. Correct. So everyone wants to be the head of the household. But I'm telling you here right now, I would hate to get out of line with God and then him be like, oh, you have to answer for what your husband did. You have to answer for what your children did and everybody else that you influenced around you that I told you to bring to me. Correct. Like that is what men have to answer for. And and, and, and to get a, another little grasp yet again, maybe I should have... Uh, so you know I know it and I can go to it. But I know in Second Timothy, yet again, Paul is talking about a man, mm-hmm. his, you know, his offspring. And he talks about if a man doesn't provide for his offspring. Yeah, can't eat. Thank you. So a lot of people, a lot of, I'll, I'll, I'll keep the topic on myself. We know <laughs> I got children with you and outside of you. And same here. Now, now, if I wasn't doing what I needed to do to try to provide... Now, Mm -hmm. one of those situations is very icky. I'll leave it at that at best. But with with the other one, you know, I put myself, you know, in 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 between the state and myself to say, hey, that's my son. I I want to take care of my son. Correct. And that's only because spiritually, I mean, some people have that charge on you. Right. In the physical and my flesh, I did, too. But spiritually, that conviction was like, son, you know what you need to do. Do it before it becomes too late. So I say that to say, yeah, some people, some people in the flesh, yeah, they might abide and do the right thing. Some people in the spirit are led by the spirit. And so they do the right thing. But you can't. I, I don't know anyone who is led by the spirit truly and then chooses mm-hmm. to still make mistakes. 
purposefully. You will make mistakes. I'm not saying any Christian or anyone who was led by the spirit won't make mistakes. I, I make mistakes every now and again on a daily, uh, weekly, whatever the case may be. I'm not without sin. I would be a liar if I were to say that. Yeah. But through the notion of what we're talking about with sex and, and with a man, a man would take care of that responsibility because that is his seed. And mm-hmm. that's where I wanted to truly start when it was, when it's time, but I guess it's time now. First and foremost for men. I mean, before we even get to, you know, because we're we going to get there, yeah, but, but we I'm have just, to get the basics now. Yeah, of course, because I was like, man, whenever you're talking about sex, that opens up so many different doors. It's such a floodgate right. that now you have to open up other doors. And that's why I just wanted to start by saying it's undervalued and as you would say, overrated. Right. And I say overrated because everyone looks at the pleasure. Mm -hmm. So check me out. So as a man, I would say, protect your seed. You lay down with dogs, you're going to wake up with dogs, right? Oh, I thought it was fleas. Hey, you're still going to wake up with a dog right (laughs) next to you. You can be fleas, ticks, whatever, whatever that dog got. And I'm not even talking from an STD point. So is that just a way of saying? I mean from a mentality. So is that just a way of saying, like, you attract what you are? Bingo. That's where I'm getting at. So if you lay down with an individual, man, woman, Whoever you are, if you lay down with whatever you lay down with, why do you think the issues that, like you said just a moment ago, the spiritualness is going to come upon you as well. The demons that that individual had Mm -hmm. are now going to partake in you. you, But I'm saying this from just because I don't think everyone thinks too far like I do. You know how I go. I just mean from this standpoint, you met a girl in the club. You don't know her. You know, you she look good, you look good, y'all look good together. Y'all <laughs> leave that same night, you it know you good. you know what's going down and it feel good. Yeah. But you you don't think to think, man, I just met her in a don't club. Stop to think, yeah. On the first night. And I mean I want right. I want her to let me because hit. For one, a lot and, and a lot of men today would be like, Oh, that's a representation from her. But if a lot of women were in the right mindset, that's a representation of him. Correct. So I say this for the men when I say protect your seed. You met this chick. I'll say. I'll, hey, I, I'll, I'll it, say it feel like, good without it. It, it kind of the same. <laughs> it kind of not the same with it. But I mean, you don't use protection. You have sex. Yeah, you do what and feels so good. When I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying this for every woman in the club. I'm not saying this for every dude who be in the club. But I'm saying this the just from this perspective like this. with the wisdom that we ought to be thinking with. You meet her. You. I mean, y'all smash the first night. Okay, whatever. No, it's not okay, whatever. Not. Because what if you just got her pregnant now? What if this woman doesn't believe the same things you believe in? We only had sex one time. This this <laughs> woman, we don't, I mean, as a man, you don't know who she is, where she comes from. Right, her ways and of vice thinking. Versa. And, yeah, cause right. I, and that's what I was going to say. As someone who had a child before our marriage, man, there are days that it hits me harder than others where I'm like, you are your father's son. And that's a hard pill for me to swallow but not only that how much and i don't want to say regret because ethan is not a regret he is not a mistake he is none of that i would say i in that moment i wish i just knew then what i know now and that just how much it affects the spiritual the mental the things the ways my son is going to grow up thinking i could sit here and train ethan all day but it's still going to be inside of him to have tendencies of all the wrong things that his father did why because that's a part of but his that's dna makeup. That, that's just of the flesh i mean like i said i won't i'll keep it on myself but yeah i am of two people my father and my mother mm-hmm. now just because they had tendencies doesn't mean i have those same tendencies you know what i mean mm-hmm Okay. And that's what I'm saying. And their can, desires are their that's desires. That's just why I'm saying, like, whenever you come out of situations like ours or like mm-hmm. our old, mine and yours oldest children, okay, you gotta hope that that child is taking away all of the good. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, but you gotta. To me, it's like at the end of the day, I have to remind myself there's still another part that makes up my son. It's not just me. Correct. But that segues back to episode one or the first podcast, the first, the first, you know, topic goals yeah. your goals ought to be to breed out all the the bad correct all the evil in your child to raise them as the scripture says raise the child up and in, in the way he should go that should be your goal as a parent to raise yeah we i mean 
and and I and I say this because I I mean my dad did his his thing with me and all his, <laughs> all his children. So don't get it twisted. But kudos to the but pops. He ain't stopped me from acting a fool. Now he yeah, might not. Now he might have punished my black butt. <laughs> For hopping out of windows, sneaking out, <laughs> doing all the wrong things I was doing. <laughs> hey, shout out to my oldest sister Sharonda. Thank you for uh, saving the boy one good time. But oh, that—that's my father See, raised me the right way. Yeah. But now look at me as a as a man. And when me and my father do have these conversations, he's like, "Just wait till Bryson get older." I cannot. And, and I'm like, "Man, no, I quit." You know, my dad's <laughs> right, and I know my dad don't mean no ill will from it, but. Bryson gonna have to make his own decisions as a man, as a young boy. But he's gonna, as long as I'm giving them the tools, even when they quote unquote fail, it won't be a fail. It'll be a lesson. Like, man, dad was right. I love how like, that turned it's into. It's a win or it's a lesson. We don't have to yeah. look at it as a failure. I love how that turned into encouragement because I said that to say, remember when you're laying down with someone to procreate, you have to remember that that person is a part of the person your body is creating. And, and, the, and some people don't even choose to procreate, but I'm just saying from the essence of just laying down with an individual, the insecurities. I mean, if you lay down with someone who is insecure about themselves, and I'm not saying just because you lay down with that one time. I, I mean, this, and, and that same thing and that was be, on them will rub be, off on you I'm because be you careful. Can continually do those things. You hear this person, that person's essence becomes your essence yes. too. So you might start thinking like, you start looking at yourself flawedly. I'm like, man, where did this come from? I used to not even think like this. But you it's know? because that's but the you spent way, so much yeah. time and th- and that's what I was gonna say. Energy. I was gonna say in a way, whenever you allow someone to enter you or you allow yourselves to enter someone, it's a lot like the world will say or this everything else would say is like opening that third eye in the worst way, right? Because right. you're allowing that person to open up a part of you that you haven't even learned yet, that you even knew was there I'm gonna yet, give you a good and letting that person fill that space and. And that's what the scripture says when it says become one. It's not just like, oh, we're of the same mindset. No, every time my husband and I choose to lay down together in our bed and become one, we are truly becoming one. The way we think, the way we approach things, the way we serve one another, love one another. All of that is happening in that moment when we choose to become one physically. I knew I wasn't going to be able to shut up because, I mean, we be talking scripture. We're talking about something of my nature something i love to talk about but two things to go off of what you just said uh first thing like i said uh i have a good example for that solomon prayed for wisdom mm-hmm. he could have prayed for rich and god praised him for, for asking for wisdom for, for, for the lord's for, wisdom for yeah. the lord's wisdom to do you know the right thing to do what god ought to have him do right and god even said like man you could ask for this this that and the third you could ask for anything under but the you sun. asked for to be wise so mm-hmm. he made him the wisest man right now now we can fast forward and this is what i mean when you lay down now All the when during david's time with. his father's time it was war mm-hmm. and they say god uh david was a man after god's own heart god is a god of war so don't get that twisted either but when his son came it's a god of love but of wrath he he promised you know the temple that david wanted to to build that it would be solomon's to build right and that was during the time of peace now, we can say when there is love, there is peace, truly, right? True love, real peace. So I find that I find that just, you know, bizarre and, you know, kind of coincidental. But with David, not David, but with Solomon. Yes, Solomon had all these women. And the women weren't Solomon's downfall because he had the wisdom. Now, wisdom doesn't mean anything. Wisdom and wisdom's like an action word to me. It, it does no good to know the right thing to do if you don't do the right thing. So you think wisdom is an action and not... Um, it doesn't matter if you know it, yeah. if you're not going to partake in it, or I if like, you're not going to do the right like thing. I always like the saying, because he, a lot of people in the world will like to say, well, even the devil knows scripture. You're right. He does, but he but don't he act don't on it. And how many of us right. walk around living life like that? Oh, I know what the Bible says, but I'm going to still do what feels good anyways. Right. So Solomon have these wives... Uh, concubines, women, right? Just I'll just leave it like that from now on. Solomon had women in his life, right? He made he probably got majority of them from other countries because it was a time of peace, and 
I mean, the Queen of yeah, Sheba so came from all over, came from yeah, way far because, to come meet him because of his wisdom. You know, in BSF, we're going over um, a lot of the Old Testament. So that's a lot of Solomon's story. And you kind of see where, because you were saying he probably got a lot of them from other countries. And that's exactly what he did. And because he intertwined, I guess is the way to say this, with those women from these other nations, it then corrupted. Yes. He, so he laid down with these women. But what I'm saying is this. He had the wisdom of God and the yeah. things he ought to do. But Solomon chose to worship other gods. And what did what did God say when he gave Moses the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt have no other God before me. So, like I say, wisdom to me, I'm not saying this is definite or whatever. But to me, it doesn't make any sense to know what to do if you still choose not to do the right thing. Right. So, and, and that's where I get out of, you know wisdom and what I what we were pertaining to with talking about set. Solomon took in all these women, all these other nationalities, all these other ways of life. Other God, how many times did God tell the children of Israel, look, I'm taking you to this land, but don't do as the heathens do. He says don't it every, do as he they says do. It every time he sends anyone anywhere. Right. He, does, he, he doesn't anyone. say not don't live off of this. Uh, sometimes like, he will say, right, don't like, do this, don't do that. He, he says, do not. But they're do, human they do too. how they do. Do not give in to the traditions of man. Correct. But he said, he, I mean, as a stance uh, of, you know, the things that are immoral, he tells them not to do those things. Now, he right. doesn't say, you know, you can't eat from this land, you know, the same things that you're eating once before. Or, you know, don't build houses or, you know, don't live in a certain type of way. He does tell them morally what he still he still tells them from a moral aspect and a way of life look you're gonna see these people acting out and cutting the rug don't do that i don't need y'all doing that because that's gonna corrupt you but god would tell them that and sometimes he would say don't sleep with you know don't sleep with these women Mm -hmm. because the way they are they're going to bring their essence, the way they live, the the way they praise their gods, the way they believe life should be. You know, some people, I mean, look at look at today. A lot of people believe in an open relationship. The man can go run off, do what he want. The woman can go run off and do what he want. And then they can come back together and do what they do. Some people don't care about emotion. Some people can lay, lay their emotions down and just be like, man, it is what it is. It was what it was. But then when you bring that back to that other person, they're going to be like, they want to slap five off of you, slap fire out of you. Like, how dare you do that to me? And some men, and I believe the the passion of love, you know, you know, some people can get away with committing crime. I'm not, I'm not telling anyone to go do that. You know, I wouldn't pay. I wouldn't want anyone to go do that. But the heat of the moment, some men just can't take that. And some women, too. But I believe it was it started from a man because. A man just walks in and sees his wife getting s- s- smashed, smacked down <laughs> by another dude. You seen another dude pile drive your your lady? You don't want to put you want to you don't want to put five holes in them. I mean, yeah, no, this is truthful. Yeah, and, and same I, thing with a woman. A woman probably be more quick to to you know beat the girl up, beat the dude up. But in the heat of the moment, I think it for a man, I didn't invest. I like see, most men think of it like this: I invested. Not just my time, but especially my time, because my time is something I can never get back. Oh, wait, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't invest it in my time, my energy, my money, everything that I, everything that was of me to make sure not just myself but you benefited from it. And you gonna go do this? Oh yeah, y'all gotta go. Y'all <laughs> gotta go. And, and it ain't even about if he's swinging six foot. I would say, like out of the jungle think, or anything like that, so but it's have, more about the time random, and the effort I have that I didn't already question. gave to you. And mm-hmm. this is going to tie back into kind of where you're kind of going with it, I, okay. I, or that I feel that you're going with it. Hopefully, this question can segue into that. Okay. Why do you think it affects a man so much more than it does a woman for his for his wife to cheat than it does? I'm, and I'm not saying women don't get hurt by this, I, but I'm saying that hurt to me is so and when i watch it and i've seen it it's so much more intense to a man than it is a woman because i think the essence of who men are look at the, what the scriptures say in proverbs about the woman who invites another man in like even cheating in the bible it 
at, the scriptures show more about the women seeking out more than it does the men seeking out another woman more. So a man's essence, a, a man, I'm not talking about no male. I'm not talking about no boy. I'm talking about a man, a person who has his hat on. And he knows what he's striving for in life and has goals. It hurts him to see the things he invested in go south. It's easier for a woman to see that and say, you know what? I'm angered. I'm enraged, but I can, I can do better because more, more women probably plot <laughs> to be like, you know what? I know old boy down the street. He doing way better than you. He got five goats. Not goats. Six. <laughs> Not <laughs> he goats. got, he got five goats, about seven cows, a couple of hens. I seen the robes oh, he, he, he be dressed in. I know he can do your girl pretty good if, if you know what I mean? But a, a woman by nature is a survivalist anyway. Yep. But a man, a man's going to strive to, I, I'm not, not, not really thinking with the, the fleshly mind or the carnal mind, but just saying a man's going to strive to provide for himself. So when a man chooses to bring another woman in, he's like, okay, look, I got you. Even if you got yourself, just know I got you. But for a man to then see that woman trick off what he done did for her, oh yeah, I got to get everything back because I done gave you the best of me, Mm -hmm. willingfully. Now you're going to go do this? I love that word, willingfully, because... But uh, to answer your question just fully, I think men, a man... Is hurt because some like I said. You say it's you di- say a man is hurt. A woman that it's different has, mindset. So a man that has a feminine way of thinking would kind of probably act like how a woman acts. Yes, okay. that's exactly what I'm saying. A little boy, a male, he gonna get physical. I'm gonna put my hands on you. Ooh. But a man, I think that's why I say the heat of the moment. I think that was built for a man because for a man to see, like he didn't do anything to cause this to happen. Yeah, and I would definitely. And this say, woman, as a went woman ahead and walked out on him. As a woman, I'm not. I'm not, yeah. I'm not calling it right if a man were to do this to kill another. Regardless, it's wrong. But I, I see I why God's even spoke. I, I see why Proverbs speaks of it. I mean, these things are spoken of in the Bible. Yeah, and that's one thing that I would honestly have to say is that the more that I grow, just in life, because obviously the more that I grow in the Word of God, and the longer, but also the longer I'm here on this earth, I'm still experiencing the world. And the more that I grow, I just see, I don't see how anyone could be like, oh, I wish I had a life manual. And I'm like, you do. You do. You you have the life manual. You're just not willing to take the time to understand it because it takes a lot of time to understand. And now you're segueing into it. So it does take a lot of time. And I say that to say, to, to develop yourself from a boy to a young man, to a young adult, to a man, Ooh. It takes time. It takes it takes wisdom. It takes knowledge. And so that gets back to what I was saying at the beginning. Once you probably start to understand the knowledge of yourself, how to live the way you ought to live. You know, you didn't found a nice success in your life. You got a good job. You know, things like that. It takes time, right? Some people can reach it quicker than others. Some people not. But you have to you have to go through life because hey, let's say a young man reaches. I'm not going to say millions because not everyone reaches millions. Let's say he reaches six figures at an early age, about 26, 27, right? This young man still probably, he hasn't experienced the other type of women that are out there because you can be a wife. Mm. You can be a concubine, girlfriend, girlfriend, we'll say girlfriend in, today, in today's time, concubine would be right. You can be girlfriend. a girlfriend. You can be side piece, a side piece, but uh, or a whore. And I'm, and so like the chick who, okay, look. the yeah. chick who got the basketball player Brittany nah, what is that girl's name the chick who was like I'm just trying to catch a bag and she got a ball player she like she said this before the, she ever bagged the ball player he impregnated her and then she left him now she collecting that check for the rest of her life most men don't even now this goes back to the club scene there are women who are seeking, who who see you drive up in the bins, who see you drive up in these new cars, who see your money, they see what you wear, they see the way you hold yourself. I don't think a man truly wises up unless he's meditating on the word of God and understands, you know, so you're saying, sees you're sees saying, what's out in the world. And I, don't I, and think, I guess because some women can play the trick good, and you will, yeah. you will never know until the, until and, it's too late. 
and and to me i think again that's why you have to be in god's word not only as a man but as a woman because this the the word will help you evaluate what you are even as a woman okay dang like i i don't think i fit this uh proverbs 31 too well let me check out titus 2 that seems a little bit easier but it, let, but, let but it's just that for for myself i'm just saying like it, it's helped me self-evaluate to know what woman i am and that's so important in knowing your worth because then again that plays in to valuing your own sex that you give it away. So let, let me pull the let me pull the curtains back a little bit. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. So we we are now born of a new spirit, new mindset, a new we are a new creation in Christ. But before that, think of think of before you became this so, new creation. Okay. What's the question? The question is, what kind of man or what kind of individual were you trying to attract, and why? Because I. I, I have will a, say, I have I can't, a I understanding can't, I cannot, of what I think I can, every woman wants. I cannot speak for every woman because, you know, I've never been cut from the same cloth. Okay. So I would always say, I, and, and I kind of said this in the last podcast, when I left my mom's house, I didn't know what to do next. I, I had no guidance mm-hmm. and I didn't know where to look for guidance. Like this was just kind of like Allie learning life pretty okay. much just off the rip. So I would say I, when I think about what I wanted, I don't think it's changed from before Christ. Before Christ. And that's exactly so, the answer so I thought I was, you were going to give. Me. Okay, because I was going to say my self value has changed. Correct. But not what I want. Right, and this is what I'm speaking of. The ex. so you asked me a question. Now I'm trying to show you how I didn't want to get I, there, but now we're there, we're there. And I really didn't want to say this because I don't want to be seen. Well, I really don't care what people think, for one. You know that. I don't care. But people are going to throw ta- tags and titles on me. But I'm going to show you. Women look. This is why I say women are the ultimate survivalist. Women will always seek the provision. The guy who can provide. Yes. Right? So sex is a bonus. But also. Well, but yeah. this is why scripturally, like, we're never going to get back to this in this day and age. Right. And the Bible's already saying we're we're going forward regardless. So we're gonna get to a certain time. But this is why fathers choose the husband for their daughters. Because yeah, chose, choose, chose, Sorry. whatever. Homeschool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is why fathers would choose the the husbands for their daughters. And this is why men just went to go seek out, but they still had to look for the 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 blessing of the father of the bride right, to then take because to me to the carnal eye whenever someone carnally would look in on that what they would say is oh that dad is just trying to get over no that dad is looking what man can provide the same life that i've provided for my daughter and the word of god speaks about a father's love for his children because we are god's children yeah. so that plays now into, it does speak about a mother's the, the, love too yeah so but like, that, but like that's that, so nourishing that father is only looking out to know that his daughter is provided for. And uh, and let me be, let me be more specific. A father with the wisdom of God because there yes. are there are some men who are going to just yeah. do what's beneficial for them. But a man, then this get you're going to probably hear me say that a lot. The difference between a man a boy and a man and a and a male. The difference between a man and a male. I'll, I'll just leave it like that. A man's going to make sure cuz he's already invested into this child. I'm trying to raise you up right. Mm-hmm. You know, even for a little girl, you know, I'm trying to raise you up with the the understanding of what these men out here might try to pull over on you. I'm trying to raise you up even how to just look after yourself, how to stay clean. Now, a mother does these things more with a daughter, too, but a father's going to talk to his daughter, too. He's really going to be probably more so on the sons, but he's going to look over his little girl because ain't nobody going to touch my jewel. What is, the, what is the Bible called, women? You're more precious than ru- rubies. rubies. A father ain't gonna let let his jewels just get so snatched up and took and taken away like that. That's my dad. I'm gonna say this. God is pleased with it because it's giving him praise. And and as long as you're doing that, as long as you're giving God praise, he's gonna he, he's he's gonna bless you with, with what you're going into. Amen. Are you having trouble with your vision? Do you not know? your left from your right have you heard of miraculous things that come about in the night and go bump but you look and you don't know what's there i encourage you to open up your bible and read your vision will be enlightened the room will become brighter 
your left from your right will be now noticeable. The Holy Bible is given everywhere across the world. This is encouraged by Brian McKithen. This advertisement was paid by Brian McKithen. <laughs> so getting back to what we we're talking about, <clears throat> you know, like I was saying, uh, a father wouldn't allow his rubies to get snatched. You know, um, men know women just like women know men. And what, what I was getting at was most men know when another man isn't right for his jewels, his his treasure. You know what I mean? A father is not going to just let any old person, you know. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes, you know, we let our pride and our emotions get in the way. You know, they got that song. Why you got to be so rude? You know, it is cool to have a guy that is just in love with your child, you know, or a woman who's going to take care and love on your son the way he ought, or what the way he ought to be loved and you know vice versa you know a man who's going to love your daughter the way she ought to be loved but man you can love my child all you want if you a man love you better man <laughs> right don't pay no bills you ain't keep no roof over her head i mean you ain't going to be doing right by her i can care how much you think you were infatuated oh my gosh, with her people are going to think i'm a gold digger <laughs> <laughs> no uh you know what no, it's funny I that promise you... i love brian <laughs> It's <laughs> it's funny. I mean, I said in the first episode, we yeah, we have somewhat. I ain't saying I'm wealthy. But we got I'm wealth. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, but that all came bills. from, and it all comes from God. You know, praise be to you know to the Most High. Everything I own, everything I got, every everything to where I'm going is all due to God first and foremost. But I have to be able to manage what he gives me, including myself and, you know, my sexuality and do it the right way. You said earlier, uh, and I know I asked you a question and now I'm about to segue into the answer oh, yeah, to that question. Asked me what did I, I remember my father telling my brother something about 20 years ago and he told Ryan, uh, cause Ryan was, Ryan was battling. So I ain't gonna throw all Ryan business out there like that. You didn't have to say what brother it nah, was. You could have nah, just nah. left it he, at my he, brother. He gonna, he gonna get this lash. I'm gonna say it like this because even allegedly. though... Even, even though... Gonna no, gonna ain't no allegedly. Sue, ain't nobody gonna come back and sue this He can't sue me. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no allegedly. He can sue me if he want to. Nah. Look, I'm gonna say it like this because even though my dad was speaking to Ryan... My dad was also speaking to me. He might have been speaking to Ryan, but what he had said was meant for me too. But he told Ryan, son, if you take care of yourself, everything else going to come. You won't have, you won't have to worry about who come, or you won't have to worry about liking someone because all the opportunities are going to become knocking at your door. And it, it, it was pertaining, Ooh, it was, preach. it was pertaining women, you know, but he said it to Ryan because Ryan, you know, at the time Ryan was going through his maturation, and he was getting a little hot in the pants. Oh, uh, you know what I mean? He he was in high school just because me and Ryan are separated by two years. <clears throat> and but when, when I say that, it segues back to what you what I asked you that question. You answered it just the way I thought. And I forget, I, man, my dad had just called us, and you know, thank you, Dad, for that call. We we needed that, loved that. But he was so right. Because even out of your mouth as a woman, and what I already <laughs> thought women were like, a woman's going to go to the man who has himself right and who mm-hmm. can provide for her. I mean, she's not looking for, I mean, yeah, a car is nice, but a woman's gonna be like, and you know, like does, you said, some does he have something? Does he have that part in full you? Huh? I said, and like you said, some people can play that part in full you. That's why discernment is so key. Yeah, yeah it is. But I mean, think about a man who has, like I said, the average man, somewhere between, let's say, 75K to about somewhere in the six figures, you know, that that man don't really have to go looking for a woman because the women are going to present themselves to him because they see how he holds himself. So at what point, though, is the woman not thirsty? Because I feel like that kind of says like kind of making women to out because I didn't go looking for you. But you knew what kind of man you wanted. And a man has to know if and when so like, he's ready for a woman. Okay. It, to me, like my dad was saying to Ryan, you'll know when you're ready because you're going to have so much to choose from. 
you're not gonna have to really even look for okay, it. Okay, I guess because just the you part- you're already knowing your standards. For one, you this is why I say it takes time for you to know yourself. She has to be a woman of God. So if it's just some old sleazy bra coming off the street hollering at me while I'm pumping gas, yeah, keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. You know, like I could have you if I want you, and I really don't want to bend my needs I don't to you know. Have you. Yeah, I mean, so when I'm not, and, and, it, and it's go, it goes vice versa for women too. A woman can be like, you know what? I have this, and, and it's no knock. I have this thing that I like. I like them tall. I like them strong. I like them whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, if we get past the physical, we be like, you know what? I want to. I got to get to the mindset. Okay, what does he think about kids? What does he think about his spirituality? You know. Where where is he going in life? What are his goals? You know, what does he think a marriage is? How does he think he ought to be in this marriage? So it goes both ways. But I mean, a man is usually because a man usually has to make the first move in most in most aspects. Correct. Some women do make that first move. But a man's going to be like, you know what? I know she hollered at me. I know this, this, that, that and third. Women are the same way. But a woman's gonna pursue what she wants, just like a man's gonna pursue what he wants. So I'm not, I'm not trying to make women just seem like the sleazy, the sleazy ones or anything like that. But it goes both. It really does go both ways. But like I was saying about the scripture and the way things used to be, this is why fathers would, you know, I want, I want to say, give their, yeah, no, because. In a, yeah, the American I mean, way, you give your daughter away at her wedding, right? right? You, you walk give her down permission the, to the groom right. to marry her for one. So and then this is why a father would, you know, give her her daughter away to the rightful man, you know. And a lot of people probably would think, oh, what if that man's abusive and things like that, and, and then of, of a nature. People don't understand the scriptures speak to that aspect too. If a man abuses his wife, if a man is doing this, that, and the third to his wife, what the consequences would be. I, I feel like we, we have spent, what, 30, 40 minutes now on the basics. And I, I mean, I, I think the basics are I necessary. I like also deep, though. And I think... You, you do? I think... I think it's all so. I, 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 I think, think people it, are trying to get to the no the, the nitty intended. gritty. I, I don't know, but does but the Bible no. only speak about missionary? Oh, can I not? Can I not about. get fellatio from my wife? You're or? talking about after the point of being married. So there's a new level to this. I mean, we <laughs> understand what marriage is. I mean, because we've talked about that paper don't bind us. Correct. We're bounded by by one. The, well. And this is why of understanding and, who and, God and is, goes, and I'm not right, leaving you, correct. not leaving. But I was gonna say this kind of also goes back to why it's so important to save yourself till marriage, because correct. in biblical days, marriage was binded by through, a man through, breaking the woman's woman. hymen. Yes, and, and the blood the covenant, blood because co- everything yes. has always been a blood covenant with God. Even even Christ, Christ isn't that was a, it correct. was a blood covenant? Blood, covenant. blood yeah, is so, so meaningful. That's yes. why it's so important. That Never mind, I was about to get real Go. TMI. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> do I need to do another advertisement? You good? <laughs> I was just going to say that's why it was a complete shock to me that the first couple of times that we were intimate. Yeah, mm-hmm. like there was blood. Because I was like, I, 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 I have a whole child. <laughs> <laughs> Girl. <laughs> but anyway, like it, it had been a while, I guess. <laughs> Your boy came through and did his thing, You're but uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah. But no, yeah, and, and see, that as we we joke about it. I mean, yeah. off air a lot about a lot of things, you know. But maybe that was just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that was just that. I'll leave that where that is, but no, yeah, a lot of the scripture talks about blood a lot, and that was what marriage was. It was binding through the ceremony, the wedding, whatever. But yeah, a, a like real, a, a real marriage is when a man took that woman I and he like went America into her. Does everything so and, backwards because to me, in my understanding, in biblical days, the man would take the woman as his wife, and then there was a celebration after. Correct. And America does it. Oh, now you're my wife. Before. Let's celebrate before. 
on the honeymoon it's like a huge night yeah everything's so backwards <laughs> i mean but that's what the devil intended it yeah it takes something a lot he tries of to, to mirror do. god but it's literally because it's a mirror image everything is done opposite mm-hmm. yeah to, to trick the people with holidays and the way you ought to live or what you can and cannot do yeah. i mean i i feel like if you search truly search not search just for the right now but search for an everyday conviction an everyday lifestyle the way you ought to be i feel like if you search you're gonna find it the thing is like i said with wisdom it's an action what are you gonna do from when you find out because some people they say you know curiosity killed the cat some people get so curious of what what does the bible say or how should I go about doing this? Or is this really bad? Hey, yes, yeah, sin is sin is all sin. So you can't really and say. Why, and the Bible does say what sin is greater than of, all. And that this, would be blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But This is a really good segue into where you're wanting to take it next. Because there are, while sex can still be fun, being Christian, there are still certain parameters because you can easily fall into almost a non-holy way of sex, I want to Correct. Say. Correct. That is correct. So, uh, Take us there, boss. so we gonna go there. So, in the la- the first episode, the only episode other than this one, <laughs> we talked about uh, Solomon and Solomon uh, speaking of the flower and you know the love that he had for one of the many women. Don't know which one it was, but woman in his life, right? And I think people think, this is what I think. I don't think people think, I don't know. I think when people think of Christians, they think of Bible thumpers or goody two-shoes or people who are vanilla. Don't, I bet he just lays on top of her and they don't. Ew, not the lays on top of her. I don't know. Just, I'm just breathing all in your face or we just. Bunny, not, you know, not the rabbit pumps. If anybody know, and I, I know my brothers in laws know how I am, you know, I, I, I show like my life, I show my wife affection. I feel like you should say no homo after that, but this is a Christian podcast. <laughs> 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 nah, they know, yeah, ain't no homo, yeah, ain't none of that. Anymore. But I, what do y'all say? I, pause, I, yeah, pause again. <laughs> Pause, pause again. But no, the affectionate, being affectionate, that kind of sexuality, you know. I love on my wife. I smack her butt, play with her. Not that kind of play with her. Pause, (laughs) Allie. Boy, see, you go, see. All right, now, spicy little self. See, we're really going to start recording the video, the visuals of this because my facial expression. No, but I show my affection, you know, PDA, public display of affection, kiss you. Hug you, love on you. But, it's also because I'm very needy. But I, I, I think it's taboo in the Christian world. I mean, th- this is what I'm... Okay, I kind of said it in the other episode. You was given... Not you, but... I was going to say, the, what? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe we got to get the visuals. But in general, we as a people, people, yeah. women, men, you okay. was... You was out there cutting a the rug. You think now that you came to Christ, you're not supposed to show your significant other that same rug? I mean, women, you was given fellatio before marriage. Now you just gonna stop? Don't be side eyeing me. Men, you was getting freaky. You was picking her up, putting her up against the wall, being spontaneous, pull the car over. Hey, let's get out this car and make it do what it do under these stars. Oh, I mean, you, put, you would put her on the wall. But I'm saying... Your sex life has to be just as special as it was before. Oh, I get what you're saying. The same effort that yes, you were the putting effort in before, that you, you would... still need to put in. Yeah. No, but yeah. but that um, I'm saying that's what I meant, but I also do mean, where in the Bible does it say that your sex is supposed to be vanilla? I've never come across it. I think a lot of people would argue, and this is just to play... I don't want to say devil's advocate. Now play it. Yeah, it would. This is what the so, someone would say. Is well, it doesn't say. Not, it is okay. And I would say this. It's it, it's I, a great I would area. Say this. It's not mentioned. So what I say is what it is because okay. that seems holy. I would say read the Song of Solomon. If if being freaky wasn't, I'm not. I'm not saying be freaky. 
whatever you like to do in with your wife or everybody with your husband. Everybody has a different definition right? of freaky some peop- is what he's saying. Some people don't go to the limits like we like to do sometimes. Brian, that's TMI. So, how is that TMI? I, did I say what I was doing to you? Did I say I had But I you? feel like because I know X, y, it's TMI. Okay. <laughs> that's your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know... <laughs> Um, well, okay, I'm not serious. I'm saying keep the spice that you have and don't think you can't under the Once guidelines. I, I will say this. Once I'm you not, are married I'm, I'm, and in Christ, sex is to be enjoyed. Yes, because Paul says that but it's for the husband, your body is for the wife Correct, and the wife, your body be, is for the because husband. Because it's to be pleasurable. To have that pleasure fulfilled in a holy way. Sex now I'm not. I'm not marriage. saying bring in the dogs. Bring in. Oh, not the, the Yeah, I'm not saying bring in. I mean, some toys that might be all right, but it depends on how you use them. Toys you can't use no toys on me. That you not. That's an exit. That is not an entry. Yeah, I am. So I would say, at what point does it become unholy? Then read the scriptures. But you can't just say that to a podcast out okay. teaching. So, I, so I give an example. I say it becomes unholy when it is sexually immoral. Meaning the the morality of it is shaking the foundations of what ought to be done. Like So it's like if you're in the midst of doing this and you get that slight feeling like this feels wrong. I, okay, I'll segue it like this. Some people say marijuana is a gateway drug, right? Yeah. So some people say, well, like, like myself, I'll say, I, I smoked marijuana, but I didn't go to heroin, okay? Yeah. But I can't say I'd never been around it, heroin, because because I was into drugs. Other drugs did form. So I say that to say this. because So sex can lead to other things, yes. But and there can if, also be if, a point where if, you're if, dependent on sex. Yes. If you, be, if you start to have a an inkling of, you know what, this just don't seem right right so Con- start pa- having, like, paul your, says your conscious starts start, start yeah, your conscious will kick in but paul said this he did want everyone to be celibate right Correct. i would love for everyone too but i understand if you don't and if you're burning with that 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 desire because he didn't right. say and, he, and, and, he didn't say it was wrong yeah he didn't say that desire was wrong we are to be con- attracted to the opposite sex, yes period there's nothing wrong with the attraction having attraction to the opposite sex is not a sin it's once you give into those lustful thoughts right and so and i would say this i would say paul puts such great emphasis on do not burn with desire because then you get the rapist you correct get the molester. and that's what i'm saying you get all so of i say like i was saying with the drugs you know it would be better to not do drugs correct right but, but once you go into this thing understand the parameters and now i'm not saying weed is good i mean th- yet again i would like to just say read the bible if you're gonna part partake in medicinal purposes that's why people the edible and, and way and is always a better why, way and i would just always but you're say, not supposed to allow anything anything other than with, the holy spirit to consume you correct so like with everything that we're saying we're just saying to have that discernment Yes. That discernment is key within everything, within knowing whether you're pushing it too far. Mm-hmm. Pretty much just if you're pushing it too far. I mean, okay, think of it. Because you I'm going to have to go there because I feel like people think, like, man, what is Brian talking about? So I'm going to go there, right? If. And your intentions behind it say a lot, too. Right. No. So if I say this, you know, babe, let's spice it up and bring another man in. Oh, Lord. And you go, why would you do that? Well, I want to see you with another man. Or you'd be like, boy, what the hell is your... You want a what? <laughs> so now we're crossing a line like, okay, this thing was just between me and you. Now you want to see me with another man? And you want to partake in this? Like, come on, Brian, like, hold up. Or if it was vice versa. Like, no one in the Bible does... I mean, this is probably... I've always been told... Man, something's different about me. I've never had the desire for a threesome. Me and two women, you know. I've, 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 I've never had that personal desire. For me, it was. It was now, I'm not saying I haven't. I'm too had. jealous. <laughs> but I mean, anyone knows me. Yeah, I've, I've had women, but I've never tried to. I've never tried to be the one to have two at one, and it's. 
I find it coincidental that nowhere in the scriptures is that admitted for it. It's always one man, one woman. Mm-hmm. It's not one man and m- many women at once. Even if a man did have more than one wife, he never slept with those women at the same time. Because there's order. And that's where I'm trying to get to. There is still order even within sex. So if I were to be like, Ali, let's bring in the dog or Ali, you're the the Bible speaks about not having sex with your wife on her menstrual either. So if I were to be like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and now we've had had that's, had that's, s- that's shower. irrelevant. <laughs> that is but, irrelevant. But I can't say, you know, you're bleeding, let's just go in the shower. Now <laughs> now maybe in my foolish times I might have done something crazy. But yeah, because you just want to get that pleasure, that satisfaction, correct. that gratification. So, right. So if your pleasure is if what pleases you is more desirable then what God is saying and what God tells you, maybe there ought to be a problem. And I, I like some things I say, read the Bible. And some things I think are just practical right. or so, so, impractical. And we're saying all of this ultimately to wrap, not to wrap up the whole podcast, but to wrap up this portion is to say that um, there are still parameters around things. Things don't have to be vanilla, but they're also have discernment within that right. have discernment like, to know this this doesn't seem like god would like watching me do this like have discernment correct. within all that you do and it, it not only sexual but just in every area within picking who you're going to choose to have to do and this actually way. in the scriptures god made a an example out of gomer yeah he did i just actually read that a couple weeks ago like oh you y'all want to be adulterers with me right okay right. he had the go perfect. marry this woman mm-hmm. and and it was all for and and a lot of people think like looking and at look it, at the names that he at, named the children correct looking at this it, was sur- all an example looking at god it surface, right an example on but god people. was telling a story though like you could say oh, he used yeah. it as an example but it was also a story now look this is how much i love you i see that you're adulterers i see that it basically it all comes back to a covenant, and it's all to be an example of Christ and the church and reconciliation. Right. And that, all like of you it, say, from, covenant. From Gomer to, and what was, it, man, it's was all, it? It all comes back to, like you were saying. From clean, Gomer to even cl- now to cleanse, what Christ did. The, clean, the cleanliness and cleansing of, of a person. If, if what you're, this is how I should have said it. If what you're partaking in is defiling your body, Correct. that is not of God. Not of God. Because your body is still point a blank, and I'm and sorry for everyone for be... for me taking this long to get to my point. But yeah, that's see, what I'm trying, trying to say. I be trying to get him there, but sometimes it takes me a hey, little some bit people, to figure out. Some where people he's understand going me with, with all my analogies and like my dad. I told I, you, I'm not he heard I me did. earlier. I didn't I'm have to not, say what I was saying, but he heard. He knew where I was going. I'm not saying that I don't understand you. You just know we are two very yeah, opposite. Yeah, you, you are very aspect, straight to the point. I might get to the point, and you want. You want Details. me to build this house I'm gonna from build you it from, from pouring yep. the foundation. I'm going to lay the foundation. We're going to build the yeah. wall. We're going all the me, way to I'm the top. And like, what is your conclusion? I don't care about the plot. What was the conclusion? Sometimes a great <laughs> plot makes a great movie, story, book. Sometimes if you hang around, you okay, the, the plot makes everything be- better. If, you, if I just told you, <laughs> if God just told us how the end was going to be. Right, you're right. You need the story. Get to the like, point. Yeah. Like if I told you, yeah, I'm a Christian, right? Just got to it. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Some people, been all they already have the stigma about me. But if I told you, hey, I used to run the streets. I used to do X, Y, and Z. I used to drink all night and day, smoke all night and day. If I did, if I if I, if I were to give you the details and then be like, but now I'm a Christian, you'd be like, well, damn, how did you get here? You see, right. sometimes a plot needs to be to given. Be so that you can see where I was and now where I'm going. Yeah, I used to do those things, but hey, greater is he who lives in me than he who's in the world. I used to be in the world. We are in the world. We're but not of it. of it. Correct. But um, back to, see, now you didn't throw us all off. That wasn't even me I this time. I that. <laughs> yeah, you did. Brian will never get to the point. But nah. <laughs> <laughs> but point blank, the scriptures tell you what defiles your body. And and I think now 
because this world that we live in now is information is so given. Most people don't even have to pick up the Bible to know that what people think is and isn't. And I think that's why a lot of people turn away from the word because it's like the word even tells you seek, seek, seek. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to seek whenever you already have everything at your fingertips. Cause I know even me as a godly woman, Christian woman been walking this walk for eight years. I still get impatient and I'm like, I just want the end result. And that's what's, yeah, I'm not and that that's person. why I, and, and that's, Which and that's why weird, can people, we're, we're I, so I, I was going to say, I'm an old soul. Like we're both old souls, but old souls in different ways. Correct. But, and so like, I have more of the impatient generation, you know, the microwave life done in a minute. You I know? love that oven. Yeah. you do. Something about <laughs> hot food, boy. But I guess. Must yeah. be the country and, boy in me and, from my father. And you know, we can even bring this back into like going fast ain't always the answer. Sometimes taking time to even make this decision to do it in the oh, first place. I thought place. you was talking about in sex. Oh my gosh. I mean, no. I thought that was the topic. I, I thought you saw about them, them slow strokes some oh, nice loving, love making. Sometimes see. we ain't trying to. <laughs> microwave everything you see, sometimes you need to you let need that to, pot thicken you need to stop because you know i am the ultimate definition of lady in the street <laughs> <laughs> oh boy like your sister said uh every time we play a game or certain, certain not every time we play a game but certain games we play be like what is something you know too much of brian and ali sex life because of you it's never because of me <laughs> I just got to play along with it because, well, dang, now he done exposed us. Nah. It, it, no, that, but I but was just see, saying that, like, but that's how much I love hot and ready all the time ain't good. Nah. And, and, and here we go. Here, here's, here's another another good topic about sex. So, it's not just sex all the time. But if and I choose or if you, let, let, no, I, that's, yeah, that's true. But that's not where I was trying to go. I was saying this. Sometimes I'm going to fast. Sometimes you fast. But you and have we to can't communicate f- that. And sometimes, yes, and that's what I was getting. Sometimes a sexual fast is good. Yeah. Because, yet again, if something is defiling your mind, defying your body, and, I mean, it's not bad, I think. I mean, you ask me how much I think about you sometimes when I'm at work and I tell you. But if, it, if sexing you was the only thing I thought about, how productive would I be? And I'm not saying I get to that point or I am at that point. We have sex, uh, sexed it. We have. <laughs> what are you talking about right now? No, I was saying, I was trying to say we have fasted sex. You said sexed. Yeah, I don't know why sex came out of my, out of my mouth. But what I was saying is we have fasted sex from one another, but agreed upon doing that, just like the scriptures say. And sometimes that is a good thing because there's other intimate but ways and other saying, ways that we can love each other right, so other than sex with the sex. Not, but, but also withholding sex is not a punishment towards your spouse because it also says when you are done fasting to come back together so that way the mm-hmm. enemy is not able to able to tempt either one of you without going outside the bounds of your covenant with one another. Correct. No, you're right. And that's what I was saying. Well, no, you said it, but I was going to get there. Whenever you do fast sex, make sure whenever that fast is over to come back mm-hmm. to it, I was just to saying, one another. Yeah, I was just Not to in. someone else, not to, you know, and not even in between it. it. And this goes for anyone who, look, I understand everyone's raised different, differently. Everyone has other values and things in their life. If you meet your significant other, let's say like we did at one moment. But like we did, <laughs> if we say, you know what, we're going to we're going to choose celibacy until it's the right time. Correct. I can't say I'm choosing celibacy with you, but I'm going to go freak this other girl on the side. Why would you say this is the person for you and celibacy is the way you guys are going to go until you guys are either, quote unquote, married or move in together? This is the one, whatever the case may be. But you still have all this lust in you and you're going to go live it out with someone else. Right, because there's, there should always be a reason for the fasting. It's not just like, what are you filling that time with now? You can't just say, I, I, I couldn't be like, oh, I'm fasting my phone, but then get on my computer all day and do exactly what I was doing on my phone. Correct. That, that exactly. time should then be filled with dedicating that time to God. So withholding sex is never to be a punishment, right. but ultimately to grow, for one, to grow your desire for one another, but also to 
go in deeper with God as well. And and you'll see your desire for God growing because you're feeling tremendously. that time that you would have been filling with sex with devoting that time now back to God. Correct. And I mean, for those who have read their Bibles, I mean, you see a lot of sexual acts that are done. Some that God was totally against, and He allowed men to kill other men for committing those. Yeah. sexual crimes you There's see you see people who are just i mean solomon was uh, not solomon but uh the buff guy the strong guy samson. samson i don't know why i said both sort of ass but samson he had a he had a woman problem too just like solomon that's why i was trying to get to samson was so quick to go find another woman he was mm. he was a nazarite right so he shouldn't have cut his hair for one right he wasn't supposed to partake of wine or or touch the uncleanliness of you know carcasses but he grabbed that honey out of that lion he had indulged in wine and i think both of his marriages if not one for sure and you know he you know he let delilah know about his strength where his strength came from and had his hair or, uh, i'm not say allowed because she did do it se- sneakingly while he was asleep but but he it let was his still go he yes her. he allowed his love for this woman and his desires to have a woman overcome everything what his life was supposed to be consecrated towards his his want to have a woman was greater than his love and the way he ought to walk his life out for Christ or no not Christ and but the Lord sex I mean sex is good great it's a lovely thing but it's almost just like the saying there's a thin line between love and hate there's a thin line between where sex and holy and where it can easily become unholy yes that's why much. within all that you do and i'm just gonna keep saying it because now i feel like there's been a theme with every podcast like the theme of the last podcast was renew your mind mm-hmm. and right now i'm feeling like the theme of this podcast is to have discernment yes and discernment is a good thing when you but just like wisdom if you don't walk it out use it apply it and don't do you no good yeah you have to act on it and it's like we said in the last podcast faith without works is dead Dead. what you believe in should now be working in your life and there should be evidence of those works Mm -hmm. but men take the time to choose the right woman because it's too easy to fall for anything when your standard is nothing correct but ultimately men protect your seed because the woman you lie down with isn't always guaranteed to be there right. I think at the end of the day. Protecting your seed starts with choosing the woman to carry your seed. Correct. Because you can choose a woman. Y'all and have some type of falling woman, out. Yeah. And now in this world that we live in now, you're ob- I'm not saying that men weren't obligated to take care of their children then. But there are some men who get taken advantage of. I'll say it like that. Yeah. Not only are they already taking care of their children, but don't get me wrong. The child, the system is corrupt. Yes, I'll, I'll say that. But the system was trying to correct certain aspects. There were some people who were getting by through the system. And I'm saying within like child support. Yeah. Some men are great fathers and they're getting raked over the coals through child support and this and that other agency. But there are some men that I know who get away with almost murder, basically. Don't pay no child support. Mm-hmm. I and put still, myself on child support. Well, you get know, to see their children whenever they want. Mm-hmm. They and they live in the same city. See they see their kids. And, I mean, don't care. And and that's what I was getting with like Second Timothy. I mean, a man who don't provide for his his children. Boy, that man don't understand what's gonna happen and i'm not saying the man's supposed to give you you're not supposed to like give your kids toys whenever they want toys you know give them a no i'm not talking like that i mean the per, you for one i just don't understand this as for one how you do not care for the 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 provisions the insight the knowledge the the, the taking care of the home life and the things that your child might be going through how can you not want to be a part of that and you just live your life day by day check by check and you have no plan no goal for that child and and or 
you just don't benefit, not benefit, but you don't produce any fruits or see any kind of labor being invested into that child. How can you have a child and not care? Yeah, I don't like, know. like, especially for those who said, you know what, my parents didn't care about me. So you're telling me you just make you made all these children and you don't have nothing that you're working towards to give this child by the end of their life, at least some wisdom or a way to walk. I'm not, it doesn't have to be about money or some type of resource. Those things are good. Those things are beneficial. But you're not going to give this kid no type of knowledge like, hey, look, yes, I did mess up by, you know, at an early age doing things I shouldn't have no business doing. But the blessing was you. Now, look at me and don't do these things. Have a wife, but make sure you have yourself in order when that when and then when that time comes. The children will come. The vacations will come. The, the 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 proper way of of living life with a family. Those things all will come, son. But you don't want to be twenty three, running away from car notes, running away from furniture payments, tearing down your credit, not you know, not having any true value to your name, other than you know what people might know you but i don't think a lot of people here especially in america hear that these things will come when needed but it's better to have children when you're stable when you're i tell brian all the time literally like it's not because obviously i'm a young mom i was a very young mom in my opinion it started when i was 21 And, you know, I still had, I didn't even know how to be an adult, not even at 21 years old. And I always tell Brian, like, I I love my kids, but if I could have waited until I was 30, which would actually be this year, I would have. I would have chose to have all my children in my 30s. Correct. And and that's what I was getting at. Um, How much more beneficial would it be for the child? I'm thinking about myself, so I'm about to be 32. If I waited till now. I think about to be 32. 32. Hush. Not 30 also. Oh, okay, yeah. I thought you, <laughs> I thought you were trying to put emphasis on no. my age. Like, he got all them gray hairs, but no, yeah, he's only going to be 32. Uh, you no, know I can't talk about nobody's gray hairs. <laughs> but um, it would be beneficial to have the knowledge and the wisdom to give the child. I mean, our kids, the boys are young. And every wisdom and every lifestyle, every experience we go through, we do try to shed them. And Ethan asks a lot of questions, and I love that about Ethan. But imagine if we waited until, and I think 30, 35 really is like the best time to start having children because you've experienced life. I think 35 for a man, and this is going to kind of sound bad, but I don't know. I guess I just naturally have a thing for men who are a little bit older than me. But for the man, I would say 35, but still for the woman, 30, just because, again, biology. I, I would agree. But like I said, 35. I said 30s regardless. In your 30s really, regardless. Because you you already live the, the 20s. You got to probably have that wild mm-hmm. infatuation about life. You really ain't learned nothing. Right. And not only that. And I'm not, not going to say everyone. Because some people right, because live not- their 20s. The smart way. Right. And there are. And we're just saying for those people with backgrounds like ours. Mm-hmm. But, um, and I was going to say, not even only that, have you lived your life, but now also to me, because I think one thing that we missed out a lot on, because we already had children before our marriage, we got pregnant with Bryson like a month after we got married, was we never really got to experience it just us. Right. Just us. Like getting to know each other, getting to know who we were before the children. Right. And not that... And I just say that because so much does change after you have children. Mm-hmm. But that's why I just say, like, it's so important to wait. And that's why I would have chose our 30s. Because but I'm, we I'm, didn't meet I'm each really other until our I'm speaking from an aspect of just solitude and owning yourself. I don't think you can really no, take I, I, somebody but, but in to, like, your 30s. But I'm saying that all of that ties in together. To okay, me. yeah. And and that's what I mean. I mean. And I'm not saying not to date to your 30s. Don't get me wrong. You can date. Find out at least what you like, what you like in a Exper- woman, experience. what you like in a man. Yeah. Now I'm not saying go don't don't just be freaking everybody, but personality wise, characteristic wise, <laughs> <laughs> but figure right. out what we like. Right. Because I mean, <laughs> I mean you 
and then some people develop early and they know what they like and what they want. I, I'm just attracted to Latinas. Okay, so you know you want a Latin woman, all right, whatever. But I mean, not every Latin woman is the same. I think when the Latin culture, uh, Catholicism is the number one religion. I think that's probably the and number that, one religion in the and world. Even in, I was going to say, even Caucasian, because you get like the Italians, and right. the UK, they're big on Catholicism. I, I, Irish people. Right. And I'm not trying to say it's on you. God God ultimately will convert the person. Like, man, it's so weird. You and I got baptized around the same time, but we didn't know each other. I was in a whole different yeah. state before I even met you. And then we were just on this crash collision on meeting each other. Now, I didn't Neither have, one of us were in a place to be meeting each other. But no. Thank God talk. for his grace. <laughs> real talk. And, um, but when we allowed to let go and let God yeah. I mean we we then became on this crash collision course to meet each other I'm not going to say and it I would was just fate say, or like, destiny yeah, but it just happened and, and I just God, say, we don't like, know you don't know who God has prepared for you because it sounds because like, you were praying for a husband and I knew what I wanted in a wife and, I, and it sounds a lot like we're like dragging our marriage through the mud and like we're not <laughs> happy about it but I promise it's the complete opposite yeah it truly is. It's because of God's grace, honest God's grace and Definitely. mercy on our marriage that we are where we are. We wouldn't, even if we were healed, I still think we would have chose each other. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that maybe if we didn't have kids, we wouldn't have chose each other. I believe wholeheartedly we are together because we are meant to be together because of God's grace. But what I'm saying is, I think Brian and I just both would have took certain precautions, knowing what we know now about this whole just the whole discussion that comes with sex children after sex taking on what happens when you have sex and becoming one with someone just all of that we wish we just would have known then what we know now and we're just trying to help you know that before you get to where we are and feel correct. like you wish you knew then what you know now correct and i don't know if you're wanting to sum it up but and like wrap it up but I, hearing you just now just like I said, when we played that game that night and you said what you said about sex, it being undervalued, under, undervalued, and I said it was overrated. I think sex truly is an undervalued, overrated thing. It's overrated with your carnal mind and undervalued by the spiritual mind. Correct. Because we would, I mean, the TV, like you said, everything's so over-sexualized. Yeah. I remember it being a uh, being a teenager. Oh, have you lost your virginity? Like it was a race for most people, and then so some people lie about it. Some people tell the truth. Like nobody even cared who it was with. Right. Or like what, who cares about the then, standards? Just did you do it? Right. And then then I don't know. I don't know about women. I mean, I ain't gonna throw I ain't gonna throw Gigi's business out there. I, va- but, I value but, mine. But but for men. Until I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna throw Gigi's business out there. But for men, after. After you done lost it, it's like okay, a body counting. Mm-hmm. How many, how many hits can I get? And that's why. And before it becomes yeah. something serious, and then so you start playing this game of of body count, and then you mess around and have a body coming out, and then it's like, oh dang, I didn't intend for this to happen. And you take your own I body, was just, not being safe. And, and, and some people mess serious. around, try to get their body count up, and mess around and catch something. Yeah. And it'd be the end of your game. Then the world didn't caught your body. Yeah. Then you six feet under because you didn't caught something that ain't cur- curable or you and don't have the I'm funds to get like, rid of it. And that's why I'm saying, like, I wish being that teenager sitting through sex ed that someone would have just been real with me. And but you know, like that's but the school, but, but the you school know, system's not going to push. But you know that that's. That. But you know, like, that's just me as a person in general. Like, I, I honestly don't care what you do. Just don't lie to me. Right. And I, th- I think it's this, too. I wish I'm out. Hear me out. Because I've had aunts, my father. I've had family members put game on the subject before I found God. But I never knew anything about soul ties until yeah, cause literally, I start seeking. And, and I don't knock this on in, my mom the because Bible. we have to understand while we are a generation mm-hmm. being trying to correct our parenting from our parents' parenting, we have to remember that our parents are a generation generation trying to correct their parenting from the way that they were parented. Right. 
And I just said, that's hard because I, while I understand that, my sex talk was very much, you have sex, you don't get STD, <laughs> period, point blank, <laughs> period, point blank. I mean, yeah, some for some kids, the fear factor works. Yeah. But some kids are like me and... Oh, well. I, I, I got to see for I'll myself. I'll play the game. <laughs> I'll play the game and we'll see if I get burned or not. But some people don't... I mean, I was I mean, I mean, was raised in church, but I never heard about a soul tie what between two people. And even, being emotionally... And even if you're not someone who's... Connected like, to somebody. And, and I understand that. And how unhealthy that possibly is. Possibly everyone who's listening to our podcast is a believer. But even for those who aren't believers, it has been scientifically proven... For women out there, that whenever you allow a man to come inside of you, his DNA is in there. Not even come inside, but just just enter enter you because because you have pre come. You have all of these things that happen before the actual. Yeah, just DNA being swapped, and it stays in you for up to five years. And then women be having wondering why, like they have all their babies, and somehow all their babies look alike. And and not even that, but. You wonder why you can't shake this individual. Yeah. If the DNA is staying or in then you for why, five years. Or then why you go into your next relationship treating that person how your ex treated, treated you. And it's because you got all this stuff going on. All these soul ties. All this DNA being swapped and embedded inside of you. Mm-hmm. And now you're not even who you were before. And, and I don't think. I don't think. Women understand the difference between a man and a male. I can attest to that. Because a man's going to make sure you understand. A man's going to have a higher value for his woman than a male would. A man's going to... At base level. Yeah, correct. A man's not A man's not going to be concerned. And that's why I say, with the heat of the moment, a man's just like, man, forget it. A male, yeah, he going to act a fool throw cut up put his hands on you whatever whatever that's why a man just like you know what in the heat of the moment yeah he might turn out and do something stupid but if he's walking with god and walking with the street walking with his right mind man i'm, I'm gonna cut this loose and i would and I'm gonna cut it loose you're i'm gonna let you go with whatever you need yeah just don't hit my line no more and i would there's no reason say, for you to, to holler at as me. Also, as a believer, don't just come into this thinking like, oh, all of a sudden you don't ever think the way that you used to think before. Oh, yeah. that's Because I just had a dream last night of Brian doing something that I wasn't okay with. And I acted in a way that I had to wake up. And I've been in a bad mood all day about it. But just woke up in a way of thinking like I wasn't even mad at, about what Brian did in the dream. To me, it was how I reacted in the dream and how I responded. So don't think your old man just goes to rest and never arises again because I had to wake up this morning and pray. I'm like, God, that's not how I would want to react in that situation. Like, that's not me anymore. Why am I having this dream? Because just just to put it into perspective, I I feel like God has given me the gift of, of, of dreams and being able to see things that are to come to pass. So whenever I dream, I don't know what's to come to pass and what's just your average everyday dream so dreams hit me hard because i just never know but i say all that just to say don't feel like you're going to be able to go into this and just it's it's going to be easy it's not you're going to want to give into those old ways of thinking you're going to want to give into doing what feels right and what feels good and that's where self-control comes in which is a whole nother thing in itself sex should be spoken to or spoken to spoken about because your wants ought to be satisfied, like my needs ought to be satisfied, and my wants ought to be satisfied, like yours, when in this commitment. Because marriage is just that; it is a a bond of commitment, sacrifice, love, forever. To me, that's what ultimately. Because I can't just say I'm yours and then wake up tomorrow and just cut this tie. And be like, no, I saw Betty Sue walking down the street the other day and I want to go sample her pudding. So I'm cutting Allie's but And this is what Christ was talking about to those men who, quote unquote, were committing adultery. You're not supposed to put a woman up, have her sexually bound and you're running off to go uh, a whole new life with a whole new woman. And this woman, because she honors her marriage, she honors her life. She honors the words, the words of God. Now she's in this home all to herself with no man. 
because of what you decided to do. Because everybody in the community knows she's married to you. And now you just and left this woman. That, but at the time that Christ was saying this, women were almost wholly depend- dependent on men for their Correct. living. And, and, that, and as life has progressed, I mean, certain things are good. It's good that women can work. Don't get it wrong. I'm not saying women shouldn't work. But you could also be getting out of your calling for God's life if you are, if you do happen to become that boss chick that's a workaholic and forgets about her family. Because then you start to develop certain mindsets. Complexes. Yeah, complexes about, I don't need no man. Da 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 da. You know? And these women, from my experience in walking in life, most of them women who are quote unquote independent don't need no man boss chick boss that then the women that be busting themselves down with them vibrators mm-hmm. and then you wonder why a man can't you come see, in because you didn't I, I you didn't put a wedge like in that, between the it, real man and the and the fake and I was thing gonna say, and it'd be the same women who have this man complex of i i don't need no man i could do it all by myself i can do bad all by myself be the same woman i was gonna i was gonna say it in a different more godly way of that be the main <laughs> ones that be up in their house lonely at the end of the day talking about why me lord why ain't i got nobody nah, br- break it all the way down they why me yeah. why lord why me then they bust that bottle of wine open yep. they get the get to watch an insecure I'm not yeah <laughs> watch that show insecure watching watching game of thrones watching something like oh i need me a herculean man to come through then she go crack that pack of batteries pop them in that little toy and then she wonder why her toy better than a man. No, that toy, that toy probably not better than nothing physical in reality. That toy is only pleasing you good right now because that's the only option you had. But had you understand how to consecrate yourself to a man, and and men have to understand how to be loving too. So I don't want to go on this whole tyrant about the woman and her toy. But man, too, if you knew how to treat a woman, talk to a woman, love on a woman, and not overly sexualize everything, everything can't be about sex. Like for me, the mind is one great thing. Let let me understand how she thinks, how she works. You know what what does interest her? What does elevate uh, not elevate elevate her? You know what where is she going in life? What does she think about this? What does she think about that? The mind is can be an aphrodisiac too, other than you know her just her body. But if a man had an understanding of those things, then sex uh, uh, i'll speak for myself then sex is even greater because yeah. man her mind is her mind is and chilling she she is so. a boss in her mind i can i can give her this money and then she can boom boom by the bam do this that that <laughs> and then she she still i mean i give her 500 she's still holding on to three but then she didn't bless the whole house with with food she didn't took care of this oh, that and the third i'm like dang that that like that there's a turn on like and then the 300 she done flipped it turned it around and made it a thousand like man what'd you do with that money oh i did this and i took care of this and i actually got you you know i also did this for the family woo i'm like dang you did all of that with 500 you made 500 turn into a thousand you you doubled it but not only did you double it but then you you invested it and not only in yourself you weren't thinking of yourself you were thinking about the kids you were thinking about me you think about the family and you did all this and did that. I'm like, damn, that make me want to like, put them kids to bed and come over and you know, let daddy rub on your booty. <laughs> but that there, you know, that there then becomes a turn out. But, the, but for me, like I said, that that's just in my mind. But And then you're, you're also financially responsible. I can give you money and then don't burn a hole in your pocket. And then there, from there, we can start making business moves, start doing this, that, and the third. And then, you know. I can be Brian. I can girl come here and lift you up by your cheeks. Like that kind of that kind of hurt my feelings. I know I don't be on. I I hate social media for one. I think mm-hmm. social media has corrupted a lot of people. But somebody so jumped good. on your social media and was like, you "I bet your husband can't pick you up." And I'm like, I don't know what little shrimp fry they think she married to. But then I jumped on your little thing and I picked you up and then I put you on my shoulders. <laughs> I'm like, Ali used to get put on this wall. I don't know what y'all Calm think be down. going down. Calm down. But in this household, it be going down. <laughs> Not to mention, I've lost a lot of weight since then. <laughs> I was lifting you up when I first met you, though. Yeah, I was two sixteen then. Now I'm, I weigh. Even, can you believe that I weigh even less than when we met? I can't say that. Somebody's cooking is too good. Don't start with me. <laughs> Mama, mama's cooking is 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 really good for a brother. 
Not me cheesing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I think we've kind of hit the topic. We might have this this yeah. topic again because uh, we were supposed to have I feel like a, there's going to be a, a lot of questions out of this. So yeah. ask your questions, you guys. Yeah, not, please, please don't actually, stray away from questioning us. If there's yeah, one thing don't. that... And, and I hope you guys got it from the first episode. But if there's one thing that we really do not mind is the questions. Question us. Make us dig. Make us question ourselves. Make us question Definitely. our own thoughts. We Definitely. do not care about the questions. And we will dig until we are either proven wrong or we know we can't be proved wrong. I wouldn't even say that. I would say because t- to me there's only there's only one way. And it's his way. He's the, the way, the truth, and the life. So there's an answer for everything, whether you, whether it's practical or impractical there, I don't believe there's gray areas really in the Bible. There's instances and then you can understand the context. And I think that's why you shouldn't just look for scripture because you don't understand the context. You might see an eye for an eye, like some woman, you were telling me the woman was like an eye for an eye and da, 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 but you don't understand the context, what that was, what it was saying. It says it was speaking of justice mm-hmm. when for those who were living right, living life unjustly and were not facing justice. Correct. So, yes, but any, anyways, like like Ali said, please, and if you want to direct your questions, if it's strictly, you know, hey Ali, I have a question on on this, or Brian, I, this is my question. We will direct your questions unless you know you just want it to be open ended and see where we both go, but um. One thing I do agree with Ali about is please ask questions. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we we know not because we ask not. And then we go through life frustrated and thinking no one's here for us or we there's no one we can speak to or open up. And I'm not going to judge. I have no room to judge nobody. So, man, please, if you want to know, I'll be happy to drop the verse and then break it down with you and show you what it's all about that'd be so cool yeah to just do like have a whole like one episode a month dedicated to just asking your guys questions so yeah ask the questions i think that'd be good to kind of recap everything that we went over that month and even what we'll be learning from you guys as well i think that'd be pretty awesome but we i think this like i said was a really good topic something that we wanted to hit right out the gate because like i said it's it's undervalued for one it's, it's undervalued in what it means, what it stands for, what it does for you spiritually, good and bad. And within, it's causing us to undervalue ourselves. We're lowering our standards because this is what the world is doing. Oh, and you know, get into this mindset of, mm, it's just a means of pleasure when it's so much more of that. So um, it's causing us to undervalue what it means, its significance, its sanctification of it. And also undervaluing ourselves as women and men of God. True. Amen. I, I like to leave it with this. If you treat sex in general, whether you're married or you're not married, if you look at it from the biblical stance and understanding that this is the only body I have. This is the mm-hmm. only temple I have. You only get one. I only have this one time to get it right. Am I going to defile it and allow anything into it? Or am I going to treat it the way it ought to be treated? Love it. I'm not saying put it on a pedestal, but do right by it so that those who see me know that I take myself serious. So when you come towards me, you better come correct Mm -hmm. because I know who I am and I know what I'm worth. So. If you wanting, if you're wanting to partake in my life, understand this is valued more than what you can probably go get off the corner for five cents. Mm -hmm. You're going to treat me right. And I'm going to treat you right. Because just as much as I love myself, I love you. So I need you to love yourself and love me like the way you love yourself. Mm Because you're not going to get over on me. And once you start understanding and treating yourself like that. And the res- with the respect for one another, man. Then the freaky stuff becomes even. Completely redefined Zillow. 
I mean, yeah, you shouldn't YOLO. I mean, it was cool when no, it first came YOLO. out. No, you can YOLO. You just got to be careful with what direction you're taking that in. You're right. You only yeah, get you only one do life. live once. You, you you only get one life. Which so way are mess you around and catch AIDS, this is going to be the only time you, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to be able to not catch AIDS. You better not. Or herpes and whatever the case may be, you know. Mess around and not treat yourself with the respect you ought to. Ain't, ain't no coming back. This ain't a video game. This ain't Grand Theft Auto. You can't just spawn back into the game. Nah, game over. Yeah. See you at Judgment and Day. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can still live life like YOLO. Like I said, it goes back to the first episode. You got to renew your mind with the way you're looking at it. Have that self-control and discernment. There's so much that goes into walking and living for God. Love yourself. Love your neighbors. Treat treat yourself with respect but like the scripture says treat you tr- love your neighbor treat your neighbor with the same love that you would ought to do for yourself mm-hmm. and yeah i agree let's close this out i'm going to say what you said last time that we should start saying but remember that you're not too far gone to start walking with god you're not you're not too freaky not too to not freaky. find god correct and there's room for whoever allows themselves to make room for god definitely those who seek him will find him and you have to seek i can't say that word diligently there we are if i would if i would have said it fast i would have messed it up but yeah you have to seek him diligently yes you do and with all your heart because then what ends up happening is not on your own understanding amen lean not on your own understanding but what what it ends up happening is like we said in the last uh the last podcast when you start seeking the treasures of heaven mm-hmm. all those things start to be added unto you yes. a lot of spiritual wealth you start to overflow and a lot of people think I think that's a misconception a lot of people take wealth in the physical as in money and cars and TV uh, like oh I got this big TV whatever the case may be computers shoes clothing no you start to overflow with spiritual wealth and yes. people start to look at you like, man, why is he living a good life? He only got one car. I mean, but then you start to treat that one car so great that you're able to turn that, that hoopty into a Benz or, and then you got to be a Benz, but you, you trade in your hoopty into a nice little, little car, a little SUV, you know, and it might be even a used SUV. Yeah. But you didn't have so much respect for yourself. You treated your, yourself with so much respect. You started seeking the things of God. You started living your life for God that you understand your value. You started to value things in your life. And now, man, you're reaping all the blessings in, from glory to glory to faith to faith. I mean, you want to see haters come out the woodwork? Start, start living your life for God. Start doing things that, you, you know, most people don't ever, want, yeah, wouldn't do. Yeah, you'll see everybody that ever doubted you. So I think I kind of, with that being said, think I got a thought, thought of our next episode. What is it? Ooh, seasons. Seasons of life, seasons of friends, seasons of alone, loneliness. But you're not really lonely. I think we should go over seasons. Seasons? Seasons. That's, that sounds good. Yeah, I like that. Well, this is Allie and Brian. This is a 2911 podcast. Man, uh, I just want to say at the beginning of this, I didn't think this was ever going to really happen. Yeah, I've been asking him for like a year straight, like, hey, let's start a podcast. (laughs) And he he said yes. I was actually shocked when he said yes. But then ever since he said yes, it's been like, when is it going to (laughs) happen? Right, right. But I mean... We had these talks way before. A lot of the things that yeah, we're probably talking about. That's why I think the questions will be great. But we've had all these talks. And we have these talks with family when we have game nights and things of that nature. Like the one when we played uh, Master ba- Say that because I'm going to say it wrong. And everyone will be like, when we're at your mama's house, we play that game. With Master Kenny- Debaters. There we go. Master <laughs> Debaters. And when we first met Kennedy... And everyone's like, go against Brian, because Brian. Oh, my gosh. That we was We had a certain topic. Ending. We had a certain. And I, I guess that kind of ties into this episode, that topic. Of, I feel like your mom was, like, trying to get up my head. Like, why does a man have to be older? Why Why are you talking to every essence that the man is older? Yeah, because in my mind, 
I mean, but anyways, we we've had talks like this since day one, you know, and we've only grown. Whether whether her insight or my insight, we grown together to understand God's way of how we ought to live. So, it, like I told Allie, I, I would tell her this when we would get into arguments at the beginning. You're looking at it from a right and wrong aspect, whether it's I'm right or you're wrong or you're right. And I'm or I'm right, you're wrong, you're wrong, I'm right, whatever the case may be. I'm looking at it from a righteousness standpoint. What is the right way? Because if what I'm telling you is wrong, then we ought not we ought not to do it. We ought not mm-hmm. to be going this way because I'm leading you the wrong way. And I have to answer for that. So if what I'm telling you is false information or wrong or disinformation, we need to cut that out. Not 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 just Brian, you want to do it your way. Woo. No, I never get my way. Right. Or you just no. I'm telling you, you know, we got to do it this way because this is the way I'm being led. Now, if I'm wrong, I'll answer for it. You know what? Now that you're saying that, I'm just like, ooh, do we go into submissiveness next? Because submissiveness comes from both sides. Yes, because I I have. Because my dad told me once, listen to your wife, son. It's not about me being the leader. It's not about me being right. Just because he submits to me when it's God led doesn't mean that he's not leading the home right like i'm sick and i hate going to the doctor and i want to be babied and i was like maybe we ought to go get you checked no 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 uh. I ain't dealing with the and my dad will say boy you better listen to your wife <laughs> or you have something you end up getting one of them babies sick and i you know, my dad be upset. Yeah, yeah. I don't one know of these, he be doing her it grand, for your health. He'd be doing it for them grandkids. Yeah, what are his grand, <laughs> whether it be from me, from Ryan, from Thraya, from Sharonda. Yeah, my dad got kids, y'all. I'm one to, I'm one to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm one to talk. But yeah, because I'm going to be the same way when I get to where he at. But no, nah, yeah, if, you know, don't let them grandbabies get sick. And, and shout out, uh, one of my sisters, Thariah, uh, her baby's birthday was just happy the other day. Happy birthday to our niece. Yes, Miss Abrielle, happy birthday. Uh, we got to really plan a, a trip. I thought you know we were what? going out and I got And right. when we do, because uh, well, we'll have Brian we'll and home. we can, it'll be a whole week. What are you talking about? I'm just going to throw this out there. Shawan. Not me telling the plans on our podcast. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Even when we go on vacation, plan is to always uh, have a, a guest but I have a couple of guests that I want I want Shawan mom and you dad gonna to be on there laptop, I might not be able to get my mom on here my mom probably not gonna be on there. they got it come on now they got all this all the stuff down there too but you know uh my dad and mom brother and sister probably some cousins uncles aunts uh then I'm you yeah, know my grandma, so my sister love. Brianna, yeah, my cousins. There's so many people we'd love to get on here and talk about just so many different aspects of things. Right. Mostly, and, I would mostly for me, I would love to have a lot of people on here sharing their testimonies because, and maybe that should be a whole. And episode. that's where I was gonna I was get say, them maybe on that, here. Maybe that should be a whole episode for us to do for one another to share our own testimonies. Just be able to ask 100. Yeah, because questions. just like my life, your not my life, just like your family, my family, we have different people who come from different things yeah, you like i used to think my life was so bad till i met you and i ain't gonna get uh, that's your business most people who follow you already know but i'm just like man can't nobody talk what i had to go through can't nobody talk the way i had to live and then i meet my wife and i'm like lord yeah i'm gonna shut up <laughs> forgive me for being the way i was for God, being so ungrateful down. yeah Be humble. <laughs> yeah, Kendrick. <laughs> Sit down, be humble. Yeah, I, I had to humble myself. Man, yes. Uh, and even here in Lubbock, where we live, man, our brother-in-law, Sergio, old freaky boy, freaky man, got to get him on here. Uh, he was supposed to be one of the guests yeah. today, and that's why I say we might touch the subject again. Um, I think Faith and Kennedy. Got, got to get Faith and Kennedy on here. Because I, I, I love Kennedy, because Kennedy is a Nigerian, and Kennedy comes from a whole different... He culture. culture. He had. Thank you, babe. 
he got culture so he has a lot of understandings on things but he also does live here in america and i would love to get him and faith on here and, and you know have people ask some questions or and us ask some questions you know and see how things are going from that standpoint uh and even to an older group and maybe some people from the chapel you know man i love brother g i love brother garrett uh even the brother I used to, we used to uh, go to church with. I love to have brother Richard. I have, I have a lot. We have a lot of plans, and I would love to get my dad on here. Some older men with some more experience, wisdom, if they're open to it. But even more so for the viewer, whoever's viewing this, I would love to somehow link up. I've seen you do this with YouTube, and I was shocked when you and uh, Raquel became best friends. Oh and, yeah, and I would leave, even love that. You know, anyone else out there who's listening to this and has podcast, I mean, I ain't trying to be on a debate unless we talk in scripture. Because I feel like if we talk in scripture, there's really no debate. But I'm not going to be like you're right. right because I'm wrong. we should be lining up. If Correct. Really if we're lining up with what the, the scripture say, we can we can uh, we can have a, a podcast link up. I wouldn't mind doing all of that. But I mean, I talk scripture with anybody. I mean, but there is one understanding, there is one truth, there's one knowledge, and that is whatever Yahweh has for us in his holy word. But um, I just want to leave you guys with that. Man, just understand, please, if you didn't understand it earlier, and if you didn't understand it in the last podcast, you are never too far gone. And I got this gem from my dad, because I drop this real quick he used to say i'm trying to do right but da, da, da. i'm trying to do right i'm trying I'm, he used to say boy you ain't never too far to do what's right boy, say it you ain't never too far gone for anyone out there if you think because you live this way or you're that way or whatever the case may be if you're truly trying to live your life for christ you're not too far gone because it's already in you to do what's right now seek it out and go about your business as you ought to go about living the way you ought to you're not too far gone you just fighting your flesh and you don't want to you don't want to get over that hurdle you don't want to move that mountain like christ said you you will have the power to move that mountain you will have the power to move those issues those problems but do you want to the the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak do you want to move this mountain (laughs) that's like I, i think it's i think it's paul when he's saying um Oh, my spirit wants to. My spirit <laughs> wants to. <laughs> but my flesh. You look just like your dad I keep saying giving that. into the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, though. Yeah. I felt that. I was like, And, that, and that's too. so true. And, and that's why I say, man, I'm not going to act like I'm better than thou or nothing like that. I, I got some ironing out to do. And I got some men in my life that helped me iron that out. And mm-hmm. I think, I think for, I'm thankful for those men. And I'm thankful ultimately for the word of God. Because God ultimately... Is getting me where I ought to be, but man, I have a I have a flesh just like the next man and woman do, and I battle with myself daily. All right, pick up your cross and carry it daily, but also don't forget when you're picking up your cross, Jesus also says, "Give me your burden." Amen. So, just remember, we do love all you who are listening, but Jesus loves you more. Amen. Everyone have a good night or good rest of your day. And we'll see you guys on the next episode.